Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Now the first question on your mind might be, Jordan, why could you possibly be dressed up for this otherwise gross YouTube video? Uh, and the answer is that it is my company Christmas party tonight, which is very nice. So I am taking off the sweatpants for the one time per year and putting on something that constrains my testicles ever so slightly more, which is rather unfortunate. But we're gonna get through it. In the meantime, let's go ahead and talk about the data harness. Okay, so what did I get up to this past week? Uh, the honest answer is, again, not that much. I've been super busy with work and life uh, and just traveling in general. I got back from Thanksgiving only last week, so it's been hard to get back into the swing of things. But let's go ahead and talk about what I did get done. So basically, uh, two weeks ago, um, I pretty much vibe-coded the entirety of the data harness or its very initial version, which is nice because uh, it's a pretty simple application at the end of the day. To remind you guys, it's a gRPC server with a Postgres backend, and all that happens is you make a request to the gRPC server saying, hey, create a data harness table, add a Kafka or an iceberg source to it, and then from there, uh, eventually I'm going to wire in logic to something like Trino or Spark in order to look at a data harness table, resolve the appropriate individual sources that comprise that, and then go ahead and read those in and combine them together in the query engine. So since something like Trino already has a Kafka and an Iceberg connector, the majority of the work is actually done for me. I need to do the wiring of unioning those data sources. And so right now, this past week, I basically wrote myself a script in order to prepare to be able to do that. So very simply put, um, it was a bunch of vibe coding yet again, uh, but took a while with prompting just because there's a lot to get right with this. And the long story short is if I had to summarize what I was trying to do here, in the past, when I've made these videos, it's taken me like one to two, maybe even three hours to basically get my test environment running. If you're trying to set up a test hoodie environment from scratch, you have to get a Hive Metastore going, maybe you need some sort of like S3 implementation on your computer. Uh, so you start up those Docker images, maybe you fuck them up somehow, you forget to expose a port on your own system, and it takes a little bit to get everything right. Even then, maybe you're running Spark SQL. Oh, you didn't add your path environment, uh, you know, environment variable. Oh, you're using Java 25 instead of Java 17. And it's all this stuff that gets pretty annoying. And frankly, I don't wanna have to remember that all the time as I am trying to do my development and code this stuff up. I'd rather automate that process. Otherwise, every single time that I restart my computer, I'm gonna have to run the same exact like 40 commands and it's just gonna take me forever. So I wanted to automate this. So long story short, uh, I have a Docker Compose file right here, which even though I think is probably not uh, the best way of doing this, Docker Compose is basically just allowing you to list out a bunch of individual images that you will start up at once as Docker images on your local host. And then uh, you, know, you can expose ports. So the, the port in the actual image itself corresponds to the same port on my local host. So that way I can have all these systems communicating with one another, as well as something like a locally running Trino. So for me or any future developers who try to work on this, getting bootstrapped is going to be a much easier process. So as you can see, I'm doing a few things here. For one, I'm starting Kafka. I need a single broker, which is fine. Uh, I'm starting a schema registry. So for those of you who are not familiar with Kafka or super familiar with it, a schema registry in uh, Kafka is basically going to allow you to write uh, Avro bytes or, or just byte arrays to Kafka that have been encoded using a particular Avro schema and then read them back and decode them using that same Avro schema. So this is how typically uh, people in big data publish their data to Kafka because you know, if they assume, oh, you know, this one particular topic has one schema and that's corresponding to one particular iceberg table, you would publish your bytes uh, using Avro to that Kafka topic, and then you would read them into an iceberg table that has pretty much an identical schema. And, you know, somewhere along the way, you need some stream consumer that is doing that conversion from uh, Avro schema to the iceberg schema that is identical to it. So I needed to set up uh, a Confluent schema registry and fortunately Trino is also capable of reading Kafka data that has been encoded with a schema registry, which is really nice. The next thing that I'm doing is setting up an iceberg catalog. So at first I was using a Hive Metastore here and to be honest, it was just causing me a bunch of different issues that I didn't really want to deal with. I probably could have gotten it working in the end, uh, but I figured eh, maybe this is a good time to, to figure out one other uh, iceberg rest catalog instead. So rather than being implemented with the Hive standalone Metastore, it's basically just a rest server that uh, accepts HTTP requests and gives back HTTP responses, uh, but you know works with iceberg. So I'm using something called the Apache Gravitino project. This is my first time trying it out, but honestly it was very seamless to get up and running. 
uh, I'm a fan, super easy. In the past, I've used Polaris, which is similar, but uh, you know, Gravitino took me like literally 10 minutes to get going, and so I'm happy with that. I also have a Postgres instance. Postgres is going to be the back end of our data harness, so I have to spin one of those up and point the data harness at it. And then finally, I have the data harness itself. So you may be noticing this and say, oh, well, how is it that the data harness, you know, how can you just create a Docker image from that? Do you have some sort of Docker file that says how to do it? And the answer is no, I do not. Uh, when you create a Maven project in Java, there's something known as the Maven Jib plugin. And Maven Jib is going to basically allow me to build this project in a way that I can now create a Docker image from it. Uh, in fact, it does create the Docker image for me. So I then created one other script, aka I told an AI to go create this script for me, that basically does the following. The first that we're going to do is uh, you know, take down any Docker images if they exist. The next thing that we're going to do is create our project and build the Docker image for it. And then finally, we're going to call our Docker Compose file that we just saw before, and that's going to start up all the containers that we need. Next, after that, uh, I can go to this little script over here called the data populator. And the data populator is just going to do the following for me. Number one, it's going to populate a Kafka topic with a few different messages uh, using the schema registry that we started up. So it's going to be Avro encoded data. Number two is that we are going to populate uh, an iceberg table with very similar data using the same exact data model. So I'm just using this. Uh, test message class in Java. So it's just got an integer that's an ID and a string that is a name. Very, very simple uh, because I'm going to try and union those two schemas together. So uh, we go ahead and do that. And then the last step of all of this after I populate my iceberg data over there is to actually go into the data harness uh, service, create a data harness table called whatever I want. In this case, it's just going to be called bootstrap. And then over here, you can see I'm adding a Kafka source like so. I'm adding an iceberg source, like so, and then I'm just confirming that I can read those back and that they work, and that does work for me, so it's a nice bootstrap script. And then finally, I had to just set up my local Trino, and I had to set up my local Trino environment to actually read from those two sources. So I've got, uh, let's see, if I go over here, I've got my Kafka properties. So you can see my broker is living on port 9092. I'm using a Confluent schema registry, which lives at localhost 8081. And then I've also got uh, my iceberg table over here, which is using a REST catalog that is exposed at port 9001, and this is the URL for it. So now that I've put all that data in there, the final test basically that I care about is actually being able to go ahead and read the data in Trino. All right, sorry, I've got about two minutes here before I have to run, and it turns out I got demo affected. So I completely bricked it, and uh, I had to rerun some of my scripts. But long story short, you know, we've got basically this in our iceberg table. We've got this in our Kafka table. Doo -doo. We've got the same exact thing. I probably should have done something different to prove to you that, that this union was working. And then finally, when I union them together, very cheekily, look at that, we've got six rows. So the idea here is we're basically just going to be unioning a bunch of different data sources together based on what's present in the data harness. Very simple. I have to write that code for next week, and then we're actually cooking with oil. So anyways, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. It's been an absolute pleasure to continue to work on this. Uh, vibe coding has been pretty fun, actually. I'm probably going to do a sponsored video there pretty soon. Don't hate me too much. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all in the next one. Have a great weekend.